I'm Anthony Dotson, I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Yeah. And don't you ever get it twisted. Young ain't gonna scrape from out of the If you can't Alright, today we got Anthony Dotson jumping off the porch with us today. What's good with y'all? What's good with y'all? How you feeling today, gang? I'm good, I'm happy, I'm excited. My book released today. I'm livid. You for feel me? For sure. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today in the A. For sure that, for sure that. Gang. So tell us what you out here working on in Atlanta. So right now we just hitting up a couple different bookstores, trying to get our book, you know what I'm saying, put in a lot of different stores, mostly black owned bookstores, you know what I'm saying, trying to make sure that our people are learning about credit, credit repair and financial literacy. We trying to put our people in a different bag now. For sure. How important do you feel financial literacy is for our community? I feel like it's a lot, cause like I was telling my partners that's behind me, I'm like, I don't never, I can never go broke, I can never be homeless, cause once you learn financial literacy, how your credit work, how you can get money, you know what I'm saying? It's a different avenue. You talking all kind of things that you can do with your credit. So financial literacy is very, very important, cause it helps us learn that we don't need our own money. Why not use somebody else's? For sure. So before we hop into all the financial literacy and the release of the book, talk to us about Aiken, South Carolina. I mean, Aiken is different. Like I said, it raises wolves, not sheep. You know what I'm saying? It's so much stuff that goes on a day to day. You know what I'm saying? So much detrimental stuff that's happening in our neighborhoods that, you know what I'm saying? Just raise a wolf out of me. You feel me? So I had to find a way out. That's real. Talk to us about being raised by your grandmother. I mean, that was different, bro. Like anybody that know me know my grandma ain't played like. I used to have two goals in the backyard. Kids used to be scared to come to the crib and ask grandma, can I come out? They knocking on the window, hey, you can come out today. Yeah. Like, grandma ain't play that, but I'm glad my grandma raised me because she gave me some morals that I feel like a lot of people don't have these days and a, and a discipline that, you know, I carry for the rest of my life. I used to complain about a lot of the stuff, but now that I see a lot of my homeboys either locked up or dead, I respect everything she done for me. Real spill. Yeah. How hard was it knowing that your parents were gone because they were incarcerated? I mean, it, it was tough, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't find out my mom actually got incarcerated until I was older, and I found out on my own, but my pops was always locked up, so it was just like, I was a product of my environment, and at times, I just couldn't understand why, and it's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm in a whole nother city where my family was a big name in a whole nother city, so it's like, just hearing that and not being able to be around them, I don't know what it is to be raised by my father, having a father to do this and that with, because I ain't had it, you feel me? So. It was tough, but you know what I'm saying? They just gave me reasons why I didn't want to go that route. For sure. So when would you say you jumped off the porch? Uh, hey, I ain't gonna lie. I was, I was a little demon child. I ain't gonna lie, like first, second grade, I was getting kicked out of school left and, left and right. I still don't know my left and my right to this day because I ain't finished second grade. But uh, on some street stuff, you know what I'm saying? I probably jumped out the porch probably like fifth grade. Sixth grade, I'm on the block with my homeboys. We trying to be cool with the cool kids. We had a basketball court out there, so I was one of the few that could hoop. So it was like, I was always out there trying to gamble and get my money up. Like, so I would definitely say like fifth, sixth grade. That's the real one. So what college did you end up going to? Uh, first, I went to a school back home because I actually graduated. I graduated at 16. So I ended up going to like a community college back home and then I went to University of South Carolina Upstate, which is in Spartanburg. So, yeah. That's hard. And what did you end up getting your degree in? Uh, I got my degree in sociology. I don't use it, but I definitely got my degree <laughs> in sociology. No, nah, that's for sure. So talk about your move to Charlotte after college. So, I mean, I ended up moving to Charlotte because of my job. Um, I wanted to get a better opportunity within my job and then I just felt like my environment I was falling back in because when I had my daughter, I ended up moving back home. And when I moved back home, I was head first, like doing everything I could with everybody I could, you know what I'm saying? I was throwing parties. I was doing a lot. I was just around a lot of bad environment, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know what? I need a new scenery. I need to get away from this. And I ended up moving to Charlotte. That's real. Talk about an incident of losing your best friend once you moved. <laughs> Long little nitty, for sure that. Um, but yeah, so when I moved, like what ended up happening, like bro actually was supposed to move with me. Like the day I moved, I called him, I'm like, bro, where you at? Bro, I'm going to Florida. He ain't up going to Florida, he ended up beefing with, you know, a couple of the cats that grew up with us. Like, and I still blame myself to this day because I feel like as they owe the homeboy, like I should have deceased that whole beef. Like that, it shouldn't even existed. Like y'all grew up together, y'all was around each other's mamas. But you know, I, I had a partner that's just like me. Like he don't listen. Once his mind made, he gonna rock out. So him and the dude end up getting to it on Facebook, you know what I'm saying? He ended up going, 
to to do crib trying to fight him. Somebody pull up, spray him. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I land in Charlotte, they like, yo, Nitty just got shot. I'm like, bro, what you mean? My brother ain't get shot. Like, stop playing with me. So when I end up on the ride home, I don't even think I was an hour down the road. I get the call, bro, dead. Like, I wasn't even trying to hit it. So you know what I'm saying? That messed me up. Like, that really put me into like a deep depression. I was ready to crash out at on site, any site. If I saw you and you had something to do with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was just ready to crash out. But then I had to realize it was more to the story. And as the story involved, I kind of chill out. So now I just got to ear to the street to figure out really what's popping. You feel me? For sure. Talk about your other best friend being locked away from murder. So actually, when I went away to school, like, my partner, like, he ended up getting in trouble for something at school. So he ended up getting in the streets real heavy. Like, probably one of the, the biggest drug dealers at our age, you feel me? Like, no cap. And he ended up going to a hotel to, to chill with a, a female. And the female set him up, had a dude in the back, tried to rob him. They get the touch link, you know what I'm saying? Bro, hit him, whoop de whoop, hit the ground. He had uh, explosive bullets, like some illegal bullets. He let it loose, but he died. So they hit him with a manslaughter. So bro, still locked to this day. But once he out, you know, we, he taken care of. For sure. So how did all this affect you as a person? I mean, it, it hurt me because I feel like I let all my people down. Like, I always feel like I'm like one of the golden children out of our neighborhood because everybody knew, like, this environment wasn't for you. You're going to go another that route. But I just feel like I should have been able to help everybody else go that other route. So, I mean, it just really changed me a lot. It made me think a lot. It made me grow a lot. And it made me realize, like, if I could do one thing in life, it's to change somebody else's life. So that way they ain't going down the paths we going down and dealing with the struggles we deal with. Cause a lot of people don't understand, like people talk about war, but when you really from the trenches or you really from the streets, like you have PTSD too. Like everybody you grow up around, they slowly dying. People getting killed, people getting shot, people going to jail. You may see somebody today, you may not never see them again and you don't know why, you feel me? You just know that's what you grew up around. This is life, like just, just what comes with it. So. I don't want no child to feel like this is what comes with it. I want children to feel like you got another opportunity. You got another way out. You can find your own way out. And that's the realest. Talk about being able to find a new leaf and investing into financial literacy. So yeah, like when I got to Charlotte, you know, you know, COVID pandemic as we call it, you know what I'm saying? So during that time I was working from home. So I ended up getting my real estate license and I'm learning about credit repair. Um, business funding and everything like that. So it was just like, well, I'm at home. I might as well go figure out how to make another bag. And it's been up since. That's real. Talk to us about bridging the gap. Okay. Bridging the gap is pretty much my financial literacy. I want to bridge that gap between us and everybody else. Because people from where I'm from, we don't understand the concepts of financial literacy and what it can do for us. We feel like debt is bad. We feel like credit cards are bad. We don't have real bank accounts. So when it comes down to it, when it's time to get a lawyer or something like that, oh, well, you ain't save up for a rainy day. You ain't have to save up for a rainy day. If your credit good, your peoples can go get a loan for you and go pay for this lawyer. Or you can pay this lawyer on consignment. You can swipe that credit card for it. But we don't look at it like that. We like, oh, we ain't save the money for it. So that financial literacy key is valuable into investing into your own self and also cleaning up money. You know what I'm saying? When you got extra money, go invest it in triple it. So talk to us about being able to write a book about all the knowledge you learned. Yeah, like, so like, I ended up looking at my daughter one day and I was just like, you know what? Like, I want to give you a different opportunity. So I'm like, I want to teach you. And as I'm teaching her, I'm like, it's so many other kids that need to learn. It's so many parents that need to learn. So I'm like, what's the best way to put money in her pocket? write a book with her. So me and my daughter ended up writing Finding 750, which is a credit, you know what I'm saying, literacy book to teach kids about credit, but not just teach a kid, it can teach a parent too, because the little concepts we putting in there, it makes sense in the end because we unravel it to make it make sense. So that way you understand the aspects of good and bad of credit. That's the real one. So talk about wanting to be able to invest your knowledge back into your neighborhood. Yeah, like that's my whole thing. Like one of the things I told myself when I left was, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna show love. I even have an event called Gap Day. You know what I'm saying? My hood, the Gap. So, like, I haven't done one in a while because I've been investing in all this, but Gap Day is where I give back to the community, cookout, 
basketball, you know what I'm saying, book bags, all of that. The next one is going to be bigger than the last. Um, but I want to give my community what they expected from me. Everybody knew that I was supposed to come back. I was supposed to show love. So that's that's my main goal is to come back, show love, but not just show love. But if I'm buying houses in the hood, I want the people in the hood buying houses in the hood. I want them to be able to get whatever credit cards I'm getting. If I'm shining, we shining. And this is how we eat. For sure. Did your business take off for you right away, or was it a slow grind? I mean, it's still a slow grind. I don't think nothing go right away, you feel me? But I know with the hunger I got, I'll never be satisfied. I always want new opportunities, new new moves, and who don't like money, you feel me? So it's definitely slow, but it's growing, you know what I'm saying? And I'm taking it step by step, just like with my real estate. I try to only take one client at a time, so I make it personable, and they understand that they're just not another sale to me, but they're a person. So with everything I do, I want to take my time and get everybody involved and treat everybody like family, because that's, that's my code and that's what I live by. We a family, so if, I, if you my family, I got you forever. For real. So how many clients do you have at the moment? Credit repair right now, probably like 15, 20. Um, business funding, probably like five. Um, real estate, I got like three right now. That's hard. What's the goal for all the clients here? One, for them to get whatever they want. Whatever life dreams they got, I want to make sure they, they reach them. And I help them get to where they want to go in life. So what can you tell us about your IG series every 30? So every 30 is pretty much a series that I have that every 30 days I try something new or I give up something to discipline myself and to just try something new. So like, I know I didn't have one where I didn't have sex for 30 days. Um, I didn't eat uh, any type of rice or potatoes or anything like that. So it's like, I worked out 30 days straight. So it's different things that I try just to discipline myself and see if I can do it. And then I let people know that it's possible. So yeah, that's every 30. That's real. So what are your ultimate life goals? Make my daughter rich, make my daughter wealthy and create a generational wealth for my family, but also get my peoples out the hood and show them a different route. And with my dad being home, making sure he don't go back, um, making sure my grandma can say she's proud of me. And then my homeboys that passed away, all of them that passed away that they proud of me and they know I did what they wanted me to do. So like, that's really my goal is to just make everybody proud and make sure everybody eats. For sure. What's one thing you would do or teach to a non-believer? Hey, it's an opportunity for everybody. Don't ever feel like you ain't got a chance or, or a way. It's hope for everybody. You just got to believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you're going to win every time. But when you got people that's not believing in you and you don't believe in yourself, I can't make you believe in yourself. The world is yours. So you set the pace, you run your marathon, and let it continue. For sure. One thing about our people is they don't know how accessible financial literacy really is. So how is it that you accept all the knowledge and got them re-give it back, you know what I mean? Or just teach it back, or just try I mean, because everything I learned, like I always, like I tell my peoples, I ain't gonna never put you at my table. I ain't gonna never put a plate in front of you. I ain't gonna never put food on your plate. But one thing I will do, I'm gonna put you in the kitchen. So I'm gonna give you the recipe. It's up to you what you do with it. So once I learn something, once I learn something, I pass it out. I'm gonna let you know how I did it. I'm gonna let you know the ways you can do it. And I'm gonna tell you it's up to you to do it. Now, if you take that and you go with that route, I'm gonna mentor you along the way. So that way, even if you make it higher than me, I'm proud because it's like, you did better than me. So I salute that. So that was my whole thing. Everything I learned, I pass it down. Like, you can ask bro behind me. Like, every time I get something on some business funding, hey bro, I just learned this, woo 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 woo. So, you know what I'm saying? You, I'm just giving the knowledge out. It's free knowledge, so why not give it out? I know I pay for it sometimes, but it's like, even though I pay for it, I know my blessings gonna come because I gave it out for free. For sure. How lucrative would you feel the, net, the latter effect, as I, I like to call it, is for our people? I feel like we, we trendy, especially and being in the A right now, it's very trendy. So whatever's popping at the time, our people gonna run with. So what I'm hoping to do is the same way people look at drugs, they look at credit cards, they look at financial literacy, opening a business, like, you know what I'm saying, scamming, like you ain't gotta scam, you can use your own credit, you can use business funding. Why finesse somebody else when, when you can learn to finesse? So my whole thing is just trying to show people that this is easy. This is not hard work. The same way these cats running up them PPPs, you can run credit up like that. You just gotta know what you're doing. You know what For I'm saying? Sure. So long as I can teach them the trend of what to do with it and how to treat it. And that's, I think, our biggest problem with our people is we get it and we mess it up. We fuck it off, excuse my language. Don't fuck it off, invest it, flip it, and then fuck it off. Use the money that you making from the money that you already got 
to 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 fuck out and keep your money For sure. and keep letting it run up. For sure. If it's one thing that financial literacy has taught you, what would you say it is? Uh, opportunities are taken, not given. Got to go into detail with that one. That's going to go over a lot of folks' head with that one. Like. All right. So, I mean, just like this. I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to throw one of my plays out there. I'm going to give a free game just because I'm off the porch right now. For sure. So, for instance, a lot of people be looking at cars. They want cars. You get a business, get a car in your business. One, the interest rate going to be lower. Two, you can write it off. Three, you can write off the gas. So literally, you can use this car as your everyday expense, but make it business expenses. You feel me? Because when you go on a meeting, you pay for your food, right? You can write it off. So what the car thing is, if you go to Bank of America and you got an LLC that's over two years, you know what I'm saying? You can get a $60,000, $70,000 car loan, as long as your credit right. You feel me? So with that, people be like, because right now I ride around Houston in a Porsche. Oh, bro, how you get a Porsche? You got money, da 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 Nah, not really. I just know how to use my credit. That same thing you paying for that to Toyota on the car note, I'm paying on my Porsche. So we paying the same amount of money. I just knew how to leverage what I had in front of me. That's the real one. So goddamn, teach me how to goddamn get a Porsche. And I, you know what I'm saying? So like... <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it ain't nothing like... So what I ended up doing was I, I fixed my credit. I tell anybody to fix their credit. It's easy to get a 7, 7, 20, 7, 30, 7, 40, as long as you know what you're doing. Clean up all the negative, get the negative off, you know what I'm saying? Get a couple trade lines, get a couple credit cards. Because 9 times 10, our people, like I said, we don't got banks. So we don't even have credit cards. One credit card, like I had one client, he ain't never had nothing wrong with his credit. He had probably like a 500. I put one credit card, he applied for one credit card, his, car, his score went to a 760, like that. So it's certain ways that you can get your credit to go up. So once you get your credit to go up, Go into the bank, have your little EIN, have your business ready. Don't have no fake business, y'all. Do not have a fake business. I have a real one. Go in there, be like, yo, I need to get a car for my business. Co-sign for it. Now you got a 2% interest rate. Game, game. game. Right, what? Yeah. He just put you down. Look. Yeah, it's easy money. Like, you just got to know what to do with your credit. And then, on top of that, if you got a certain weighted car, you can write the whole car off. That's the real one. That's why cats riding around the G-Wagons, little do you know. Or, matter of fact, I'm going to even give it more game just because I'm off the porch and I done came all the way to Atlanta. What a lot of people don't understand is their car can pay for them. That's why I say I can never go homeless. You can get a Toyota, you can get a Porsche, you can get a Mercedes, whatever. Go to three or four real estate agencies and be like, hey, I will put your flyer, your ad or whatever on the side of my car. $600 for three months. Most real estate agents or anybody that's marketing their business, they love marketing, it, especially real estate agents, because one house, they can make $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. So $600 ain't nothing. Get three different agents from diff three different places or three different businesses. $600 a piece, y'all do the math. That's your car note, and you probably done paid a little bit of your rent with that. Next thing you know, you done paid your car off early, and you riding around free off of somebody else's money. For sure. That's how good your credit can work for you. For sure. How important or revolutionary do you feel financial literacy can change our communities? I feel like it can change it a lot because what we all look at is when somebody got a stack of money on their arm or when, you know what I'm saying, you got the biggest designer, you got the designer this, the nicest cars. So people feel like there's a couple ways to get it. Either you robbing, you scamming, or, or, you, or you killing, you feel me? Or you selling drugs. So that's not the only way you can get these things. You can use your credit to get these things and use them to leverage more credit or leverage rewards. Because when I go in Louis Vuitton and I buy a bag or I buy this different stuff, I'm using it to get reward points. Like my whole hotel stay down here was free. You feel me? Because of the fact I had reward points with the Marriott and I ain't staying anywhere. I'm staying at a Marriott, but it was covered because I use reward points. So use the things that you have to benefit you. So I definitely feel like it can change the culture because we always look at it, how do I get this? We like the flash, we like this and we like that. And like I tell people all the time, you got $100,000 on your arm. I got one car with $100,000 on it. So you do the math, who got more money? All right. So. Any last words and shout outs? Um, I definitely want to shout out to my daughter, you know what I'm saying, the co-author. Finding 750 is now out. It teaches kids and parents about financial literacy and it lets us know that you know it's a way out and you teach a generation of wealth by reading this book so i definitely recommend any parents that have questions about credit or need any kind of credit repair please reach out to me um, my instagram is curiosity underscore effect um, so please reach out and make sure y'all go get fine at 750. for 
For sure, man. Anthony, we appreciate having you today, gang. I appreciate y'all. Gang. Yeah. And don't you ever get it twisted. Young ain't gonna from my dimension. If you can't feel my 